I'm Chef Frank, this is Proto Cooks, and today we're making gazpacho. Chef Frank, what is gazpacho? Great question. Gazpacho is a cold tomato soup from Spain. Uh, and it's usually eaten during the summer when it's really hot out, and it's just meant to cool you down and be refreshing. For my gazpacho, this is what you're gonna need. Italian bread, red onion, garlic, chili flakes, pimenton or smoked paprika, tomatoes, cucumbers, extra virgin olive oil, and sherry vinegar. And of course, salt and pepper. Before we start this gazpacho, let's talk about a few of the ingredients. The first one being bread. Bread adds to the texture of the soup. It makes it silky, uh, it gives it some body, and I like the way the finished soup tastes with bread in it. If you have an allergy or a gluten intolerance, keep the bread out, it's fine. It'll still taste good. Next ingredient I wanna talk about is chili flakes. Traditionally, you probably wouldn't see this in a gazpacho, but I like that it adds just a little bit of spicy kick to it. I'm also gonna add some pimenton, which is smoky paprika. Again, might not be traditional, but I like a little bit of that smokiness in my finished gazpacho. Another ingredient that's a must is cucumber, right? I'm gonna use an English seedless cucumber. I'm gonna peel it before we puree it. Another ingredient I like to put in my soup and on top as a garnish is extra virgin olive oil. A nice kind of peppery, grassy extra virgin olive oil adds some nice flavor. Uh, and it also helps with the texture like the bread. I also like to add some sherry vinegar. Uh, sherry vinegar is one of my favorite vinegars and they make sherry in Spain so it fits the profile. Sherry vinegar, if you don't wanna use sherry vinegar, use lemon juice, use some red wine vinegar, it's totally up to you. But again, this is my recipe, so sherry vinegar. Last but not least, let's talk about the star of the show, the tomatoes. Uh, I have a variety of tomatoes here, some small beef steaks, some brown tomatoes, some grape tomatoes. Best time for tomatoes by me is late summer. Uh, you get the really nice heirlooms or the nice juicy beef steak ones. I tend to stay away from things like plum tomatoes. They don't have a lot of juice and they're kind of dry. So find yourself some nice juicy ripe tomatoes for this soup. First thing I'm gonna put in the blender is my cucumbers. And I like to put things that are kind of soft and will puree really fast at the bottom. So it's like tomatoes, cucumbers, onions, and then the bread at the top. Uh, this kind of like an order of operations. I also like to put uh, all of my soft vegetables in there so they can kind of marinate for a little while. I take the ends off of my cucumber. I don't save the ends. And then I peel. Like I see a lot of people peeling like this. No, cucumbers peel really quick. Just long strokes. But I'm not taking the seeds out on this. I'm not worried about the seeds. There is actually some nice juice in there. And I'm gonna cut this small enough so that the blender doesn't have to do that much work, right? Everything just goes in there. Next thing, tomatoes. Uh, and I'm not gonna cut the little stem end off of the tomatoes, just for the fact that this is gonna get pureed. I'm gonna strain them out. So I'm not too worried about it. I'm gonna quarter my tomatoes, throw them into the blender, right? And I'm also going to kind of give them a little bit of a push down and kind of break them up and squeeze them a little, just because I want them to kind of be juicy. I want to get some of the juice out. Give this a little squeeze. You see, I'm kind of like mushing it up. That's good. That's what I want. I'm going to add my chili flakes. I'm going to add my pimenton. I'm going to take my clove of garlic and just give it a good whack. And my red onion. Just going to chop that up. Kind of a rough chop. Into the blender. Vegetables are chopped in my blender. Now I'm just gonna hit it with some of my uh, sherry vinegar, a little bit of extra virgin olive oil. Try and find some nice Spanish stuff. So I'm kind of marinating the vegetables for a few minutes. So while the vegetables sit with the olive oil and the sherry vinegar on them, I'm going to cut my bread, all right? Black pepper, nice amount of black pepper, and then a fair amount of salt, right? We want Two nice handfuls of salt. I got a spoon here, and I'm just gonna kind of like get in there and mush it together a little, right? Take out some of that frustration, you know. It's hot out. I don't have soup yet, you know? So get in there and just kind of like press it down. And all I'm gonna do is set this aside for about 10, 15 minutes, uh, and then we can puree it up and put our bread in there. Vegetables are marinating in my blender. Let's cut our bread. I'm not gonna use all this bread and I'm just gonna use the white of the bread. So take the crust off. 
I just want the soft inner part of the bread. Not a lot, not the whole loaf, right? These can be snacks for you later, right? And I'm just gonna kind of cut this into small pieces. Again, this is just gonna add some texture to our finished soup. And I'm gonna soak this. So I have a little bowl of water here. I like to soak my bread in water to hydrate the bread. If I just take the bread and put it in the soup, it's gonna kind of dry the soup out and make it a little too thick. So hydrate your bread. It'll also kind of puree a lot smoother if it's hydrated. It is time to blend our soup up. Now, I have my bread set aside. What I'm gonna do first is kinda of get this going, get this blending a little, and then I'll add the bread later on. Make sure that whenever you use a blender, that you always have a hand on the blender container, uh, either on top or holding the handle. Sometimes these things are powerful enough that this jumps off, so I always try and have a hand here, right? Okay, it's gonna get loud. Uh, we started blending, I'm gonna add my bread. I'm gonna squeeze it out, get out some of the water. It doesn't need to be all the water. Just squeeze out some of the water and let's continue to blend. Take a look. Ooh, it looks good. <laughs> Let it go for another like half a minute. I think some people get concerned that this is kind of like a pinkish color. I don't really worry about that. We're blending this. We're also putting a lot of air into it, right? So as you blend, you get a lot of air and that's why it goes pink. I'm not too worried about that. I'm worried about flavor. I can make this look good. So let me give it a taste to make sure it tastes good. Now, I need salt. So this is a good uh, point to add more salt. I have all of my stuff on the side here. I think it needs a little more vinegar. So you wanna be able to adjust before you take it out of the blender, right? Another little pinch of salt, a little more of the olive oil. The next step is to strain this. Not everyone believes it needs to be strained. I like to strain it in case there's like a big chunk somewhere or there's skin or seed somewhere. I like it to be nice and smooth. Uh, and it's probably a leftover from me being a restaurant chef. So get your strainer, get a container, and we're just gonna kind of push it through, right? Try and get most of the big chunks out. I believe it's worth the time to do this step, right? It'll also take out some of that chili flake that have given a little spice now, but they won't sit too long on there and give it like, make it super spicy. There's seeds. I don't like that, right? I want it to be a uh, smooth, nice, creamy almost soup, right? But look at that. So I get a lot of that stuff out and that's what I'm looking to remove, right? So skins, seeds, bye bye right? I'm gonna take this and put it in the garbage. Something I really love about gazpacho is that it lends itself to a lot of different garnishes. You can put a ton of different stuff. Some people put seafood in it. Some people will just put some chopped vegetables, but it's one of those things that you can put whatever you want in it. Now, traditionally that might not be the case, but it's your soup. So you put whatever you want in it. Another thing that's really great about this is it's great for parties because you can make it ahead and serve it in shot glasses, if you really want to, you could probably put some booze in it too and serve it as a shot, a gazpacho shot. So it's a really versatile soup. Um, it's refreshing, it's delicious, and it's actually really good for you. A little off brand for you. A little off brand, right? All right, so I think we're looking good. We got most of the chunks out. Now I'm gonna have a nice mouthfeel. I don't really like when I get seeds and skins. The soup is pureed and strained. Uh, could you serve it right now? Sure, sure you could serve it. I like to chill it. I'm gonna put it in the fridge for a couple hours, give the flavors a chance to kind of mingle, and chill it down, right? I'm not gonna serve this soup icy cold. I don't want it to be icy cold. I want it to be chilled, not cold. Not only that, when you chill stuff down, it changes the flavor. The flavors get dulled or muted, so we might need to add more vinegar, more salt, more olive oil. So give it a chance to mingle, give it a chance to chill, and then let's taste, all right? Lid on. All right, the soup's been in the fridge for a couple of hours. Let's give it a taste before we plate it up.
Make sure you have your handy dandy Star Wars tasting spoon. It's got some nice texture. You can see it's not super liquidy. I think it needs just a touch of salt, not a lot. Just another little pinch, give it a stir. Because this is a cold soup, I have my plate in the freezer. Again, I don't want it to be icy cold, but I do want it to be cool. I want this to be refreshing. Let's plate her up. Oh, look at that texture. Gazpacho has some close cousins. It has ajo blanco, which is basically a white version of this without tomatoes. It has another cousin called salmorejo. Uh, and they're all kind of the same kind of cold soup uh, with tomatoes, without tomatoes. The garnishes will change. And I'm not going too crazy with my garnishes. I'm gonna take some little baby cucumber slices and float them in there just to have a little crunch again. This soup lends itself to having lots of different options as far as garnishes and different flavors you can put in it. So a nice amount of cucumbers in there and then a nice beautiful drizzle of a nice Spanish extra virgin olive oil. Now's my favorite time, time to taste. Just looking at the soup, right? It looks really good, but I love the texture that it has. It's silky. It is not kind of like tomato chunks that are in like tomato wateriness. It's got some texture to it and that's what I want. So let's get in there, get a piece of cucumber, get a little olive oil. Mm. Mm. So it tastes like tomato, it tastes like cucumber. Slight bit of heat from those chili flakes and a little bit of smokiness from our pimenton. This is a summer classic you have to try. It's a great way to use up tomatoes, uh, especially at the end of summer when there's so many of them. It's delicious, it's good for you. You can eat it as an appetizer, you can eat it as an entree. Uh, it's cooling and refreshing. So it's good for any time of the week. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give us a thumbs up, like, and subscribe. We have merch in the description down below. We have a PO box down there as well. I wanna thank our Patreon patrons for your support. Thank you so much. And that is my gazpacho. I'm Chef Frank, this is Proto Cooks. Buenas.